From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. Crazy people. Spam, rip up, boom, spam. George Burns and Gracie Allen. Oh, the show where there's orchestra for singing glee with a smoothie string. Last but not least, the whiz bud he sings. <laughs> fun on Monday night is to listen to Burns and Allen. And how to make school lunches that get A plus is a question you can answer with spam. S-P-A-M. In any youngster's language, spam is a word for delicious meat. Tender, tasty meat that's all ready to eat as soon as you open the can. Hormel originated spam and gave busy mothers this new combination of meat seasoned in a better way. Whether you pack a lunch box or the children rush home at noon, spam is a time saver that gives your youngsters good food husky appetites need. Try Spam tomorrow for lunch. Use the easy recipes on the label, and you'll discover the way to make school lunches easier to get, better to eat. And look who's here, those two lovable stars of our big happy family, George and Gracie. Everybody. Hello, George will be here in a minute. Oh, wait till you see him. He's all slicked up. He's wearing a full dress suit with tails and everything. He must be going to some swell place. Because this time he had both hands manicured. Well, well Gracie, a, a full dress suit? Yes. Where's George going? Well, I don't know. See, maybe he's going to the UCLA football team play. Maybe he's going to see them. No, no, that's impossible. UCLA hasn't got a football team. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he's got a date with Brenda and Cobina. No, nobody wants a date bad enough to go out with George. <laughs> I know, maybe he's gone over to John Barrymore's party to help him celebrate his divorce. He always goes to those. <laughs> uh, then maybe again, he's got to watch the... Percy, how do I look? <laughs> Stop laughing. Stop laughing. The reason I'm wearing this full dress suit is because the sponsor is coming here tonight. Right after the show, I'm taking him out. What's so funny? I'll admit that this isn't exactly an Eastern-style suit. You see, they're worn out in the West. <laughs> it's a little worn out in the South, too. <laughs> well, you may not believe this, but this is a very expensive suit. The vest happens to be satin. Satin? <laughs> Looks more like it's been slept in. <laughs> well, forget the suit. Now listen, everybody. Hey, when the sponsor, bueno, when the sponsor gets here, here, I, 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 I want, I want every, I want. General is una cosa muy bonita. El traje es verde. Sounds like somebody is following me. What is it, Senor Lee? Uh, Senor Burns, that's a very loose-fitting suit. <laughs> You mean loose fitting? Uh, in that suit, you look like that movie star Robert Taylor. <laughs> it's Taylor. A trailer is something that drags behind. You guessed it. <laughs> Artie, will you talk to that guitar player of yours? Okay, George, leave it to me. Senor, if you don't stop insulting Mr. Burns about his clothes, he'll hit you over your head with his baseball bat. That's... What the what baseball bat? The one you got with that suit. <laughs> Never mind the suit. After the sponsor get here, gets here tonight, I'm going to take him over to Ciro's and then to the theater and then to the Coconut Grove and then to all the night spots. Well, aren't you and... taking an awful chance, George? What do you What do you mean an awful chance? Well, supposing he runs out of money. <laughs> no, quiet. You were with me last night when I had 12 people out for dinner. And when the waiter came over and said, who shall I give the check to? I fought and fought and fought. Remember? Yeah. But you had to pay it anyway. <laughs> well... Anyway, you'll have to admit that the drinks were on me and the steaks were on me. And... Yep, and the ketchup is still on you. 
Marty, will you go away? Oh, don't mind him, George. That's a nice-looking suit. Thanks, Bud. Spots. <laughs> but when the sponsor gets here, you just talk about Span. Okay. When he comes in, I'll say, your coat fits very well over those pork shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... Bud, that's no way to get in the plug. You're just like Don Wilson. And that's why Jack Benny is sore at him. No, it isn't. No? No. Then why is Jack Benny sore at Don Wilson? Well, if he told him once, he told him five times. <laughs> Call up your wife. Let's not barge in on the Let him know you're crying. <laughs> and, Artie, there's something that's very important. The sponsor's favorite song is Blueberry Hill. So I want you to play it tonight. Uh, Senor Burns, I do not like it. You do not like Blueberry Hill? No. Why not? The seeds get in my ears. <laughs> well, anyway, Artie, tonight you play it. Well, how does it go, George? Well, I found my thrill in Blueberry Hill. <laughs> you better throw yourself into second if you want to make that hill. <laughs> well, just play it. I'll ship for myself. Now, let me see. Is everything all set for the sponsor? Oh, yes. Gracie, did you buy that gold cigarette case I told you to get from? Well, I went shopping for it this morning. And those Christmas crowds are terrible. I know, you I know, but did you get the case? Look, you should have seen the way two women were fighting over a little pair of shoes. Gracie, the cigarette case. One woman grabbed one shoe, another woman grabbed another shoe. Look, Gracie. Well, I had to walk home barefooted. <laughs> Gracie, did you get the cigarette case? No, I'm coming to that. So anyway, I'm in the middle of a big crowd, and I'm walking past the elevator. Now, let's not get into that. Well, you can't help it when the crowd is pushing you. <laughs> All right, so you got into the elevator. Did you get the cigarette case? No. No? They were on the fourth floor. Well, where did you go? To Glendale with a man. <laughs> what man? I don't know. You don't know? No. You didn't know him. Why did you go to Glendale? With I had to. My thing got tied up in his package. <laughs> well, why didn't you untie the string? I couldn't. It said on the package, do not open until Christmas. Oh, I see. <laughs> and now the smoothies, Bab, Charlie, and Little will sing Argentina. Gracie, I told you to get that cigarette. <laughs> You'll find your life will begin the very moment you're in Argentina. If you're romantic, senor, then you will surely adore Argentina. You'll be as gay as can be if you will learn to see sea like a Latin. For as soon as you learn, then you will never return to Manhattan. When you hear your Tiamo, you steal a kiss and then. If she should say manana, it's just to let you know. You're gonna meet again. I better know, kiss and glad that you will never forget Argentina. Well, there are rumors and tangos to tickle your spine. Moonlight and music and orchids and wine. You'll want to stay down Argentina way. Down Argentina way. Say, you'll find your life will begin the very moment you're in Argentina. If you're romantic, senor, then you will surely adore Argentina. You'll be as gay as can be if you will learn to see sea like a Latin. Oh, Mr. Soon as you learn, you never will return to Manhattan. You'll steal a kiss and then, if she should say manana, it's just to let you know. You're gonna meet again. I better know, Castanet, that you will never forget Argentina. You want to stay. You want to play. Down on the way. Down on the way. I know that. I know that, but Gracie, tell me, did you or didn't you get that cigarette case? I'm coming to that. So, I finally got to the men's department, and there was the most marvelous sale on electric razors. So you got the sponsor an electric razor? Well, I would have, except for one thing. What was that? Well, I didn't know whether his face was AC or DC. <laughs> 
look, Gracie, how many years have you lived in a coma? Two. Then we moved to Seattle. <laughs> hey, see at least. Look, the next time I want an idiot to buy something for me, I'll go myself. <laughs> You mean I said... Wait a minute, I said something funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you burgled it. Just the slip of the charm. Uh-huh. Take it, take it, take it, Pardon senor. me, Senor Burns. If you want to give the sponsor a nice gift, why don't you buy him a potato clock? A potato clock? Si, sí, senor. You set the alarm and it wakes you up potato clock. <laughs> well, next week, do me a favor and oversleep. Hey, sound man. Hey, four years in Harvard. Open the door. Just one moment, Mr. Bird. Well, I dropped my Phi Beta Kappa key and I'm looking for it. Hmm. Well, pay a little more attention to your job. You know, it's the little things in life that make you successful. You know that I wouldn't be on the radio today if it weren't for one little thing. Yes, she is kind of cute, isn't she, Mr. Bird? <laughs> well, never mind that and just open the door. Hello, Mr. Bird. Oh, hello, Mr. Phillips. I've been expecting you. Has the sponsor arrived yet? Uh, no, there's a car at the airport waiting to bring him here. Though. Oh, good. Gang, this is Martin Phillips of our advertising agency. Hello. And he's known the sponsor for years. Yes, and I haven't seen him for years. Well, anyway, as a friend of the boss, Mr. Phillips, what are his likes and dislikes? Well, his favorite relaxation is a book and a good cigar. Well, that's easy. I'll read to him and George can smoke to him. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Phillips, what cigars does he like best? Uh, Panatello's. Panatellas? Yes, and he smokes two or three boxes a week. You mean besides the cigars? <laughs> yeah, that's what he means. He say, smokes big empty boxes. George? Yes? Uh, I just made up a new poem that the sponsor might like. Nobody wants to hear it, but I'd like to hear it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, here it is. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out some spam. It doesn't fit, but I try. <laughs> That's very good, young man, but I don't think the sponsor would care for that. You see, he doesn't like exaggerated plugs. See, bud, what did I tell you? He doesn't mind your saying that Spam is delicious pork shoulder with ham meat added, or that Spam is wonderful for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or that it doesn't need refrigeration. I see. That's what he wants. Yes. Yes, he insists on the plugs being subtle. <laughs> subtle. Well, whatever the sponsor does is good enough for me. I've admired him for years, and when he gets here, I'm going to tell him just how I feel. Oh, no, 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 Miss Burns. You've got to be very careful about too much flattery. The sponsor is a very modest man. Oh, well, then he unlike my sister, Betsy, on account of she's very modest, too. Now, Gracie, I'll never Gracie, forget... I know your sister is modest, but, but we're she, not interested She even in complained to the police because the people six blocks away didn't pull their shades down when they were undressing. How can she see people six blocks away? She has a telescope. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, does the boss have any special hobby? Well, he likes to hunt. Well, that sort of lets me out. You see, I don't do any hunting. Well, Senor Burns. What is it, Senor Lee? Maybe the sponsor would like to go deer shopping with me. <laughs> deer shopping? See, it's not shopping, it's shooting. Oh. You should say shooting deer or hunting deer. I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> Marty, will you stop that guitar player from butting in? Okay, George, tell me what he said and I'll punch him right in the nose. I'm sorry, darling. Don't worry, honey, I won't hurt him. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Look, Mr. Phillips, what does the sponsor like to do? Well... I mean, what does his average day consist of? Well, his alarm clock rings at 6.30. Well, doesn't that wake him up? <laughs> well, certainly, that's what it's... That's, doesn't it wake him up? That's what it's for. Oh. And then he takes a shower, shaves, shampoos his hair, manicures his nails, brushes his teeth, massages his face. Is he always that much trouble to himself? <laughs> Please, Gracie, go ahead. And then he spends about an hour dressing. He's very fussy about his appearance. He looks well-dressed, and he likes everybody else to look well-dressed. You see, everybody? And you all laugh at me. And he likes everybody to be well-dressed. That's right, Mr. Burns. So if I were you... I, I'd take off that suit. <laughs> and now, digga digga do, played by Artie Shaw, his clarinet, and his boys. Gee whiz, how could Jack Benny rent me a suit like this? <laughs> Thank 
is the most popular new meat item brought out in a generation. Look, we have to... uh, Bud, uh, the sponsor is listening in, huh. so put a little more emphasis on your words. Huh. Accent the T's, yeah. like popular new meat uh, hits the spot. Uh, I get it. Teat. Well, good. <laughs> Friends, Spam is the number one choice with the housewives of America. This delicious meat That's it. leads the parade because it's... <laughs> it's <in> tight. <laughs> But you see, friends, Spam is a combination of meats originated by Hormel, seasoned in a better way, and put in a handier package. You don't have to be a good cook to make Spam taste good. Spam really has a finer flavor because we use pork shoulder meat, sometimes called picnic, to make Spam sweet and juicy, and the ham it takes to give Spam extra flavor and goodness. There's the difference, the reason Spam tastes so good, fried, served cold, or baked. For example, give the family Spam and eggs for breakfast. It's so easy. Just open a can of Spam, cut off slices, and fry quickly in a hot pan. Those golden brown sizzling hot slices of Spam really hit the spot. And that's the way to please your family. So you will always be sure of getting the real thing. Look for this sentence. Pork shoulder meat with ham meat added right on the label of the Spam can. Make your meal getting easier with tender, delicious, taste-tempting Spam. Get a can or two when you shop tomorrow. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Sam hits the spot. Oh, George, don't worry. When the sponsor gets here, take him to the lawn party. Lawn party? Did you ever see anybody in a suit like this going to a lawn party? Forest lawn? <laughs> Well, I'm going out to change my suit. I've got to entertain the sponsor. Where's he going to find one funnier than the one he's got on? Hello, Gracie Allen, Stan's Meat Hot speaking. Good evening. I'm from Western Union. Well, this certainly is a small world. I'm from San Francisco. <laughs> I have a telegram for 
for George Burns. Message from sponsor. Oh, will you read it? Sorry, had to cancel trip. Stop. Urgent business. Stop. Letter follows. Stop. Regards. Stop. What are all those stops for? My boss is trying to kiss me. Stop! <laughs> Why did you hear that? The sponsor can't get here tonight. Yeah, George's going to feel awful. Oh. Well, so what? I felt pretty bad when they put up a 12-foot fence between my house and Clark Gables. But I got over it. <laughs> well, when George finds out the sponsor isn't coming... Come in. Which one of you is George Burns? Oh, well, Mr. Burns isn't here right now. Oh, he's certainly a hard man to meet. I've been trying to see him for a month. I'm a radio actor, and I'd like to get a job with him. I'll work for almost nothing. Well, you've come to the right place, brother. <laughs> I, I need money badly. I'm sleeping in the park. Well, it shouldn't cost much money to sleep in the park. Well, the landlord is holding my trunks. Oh, is that better than a safety pin? <laughs> I, I play all kinds of characters, taxi cab drivers and waiters, gangsters, bankers, businessmen, executives. Well, Mr. Burns won't be able to talk to you tonight. He's looking for the sponsor. Oh, oh well, I, I can play a sponsor, too. Uh, listen. Gentlemen, what we need is more sales appeal. Hey, wait a minute. There's an idea. Gracie, why can't this fellow be the sponsor? Well, sure. Why should George be disappointed, huh? Say, I think we've hit on something. Look, you've got the job, mister. Come back in five minutes, and remember, you're the sponsor. Oh, thank you. I I'm sure Mr. Burns will be pleased with my acting. You know, this is our chance to put George in a spot. We'll embarrass him in front of the sponsor, and he'll have to give us a raise to shut us up. Ooh, what an idea. Thanks. Aren't you glad I thought of it? You thought of it. <laughs> Well, maybe now I'll look a little better. Hey, oh, the sponsor isn't here yet. No, George, but he phoned, and he'll be here in a few minutes. Well, good. And then when we go out tonight, I'll tell him a few of my funny stories. I bet I'll get a rise out of him. Mm -hmm. I bet we'll get a raise out of him. <laughs> raise? If anybody dares to mention money when he gets here, there'll be plenty of trouble. Well, we can all use a little more money. Look at poor Artie Shaw. Has to play a clarinet full of holes. <laughs> Well, let me warn you people. Not one word about money when the sponsor gets here. Because that'll be very embarrassing to me. When he arrives, I want you to be dignified, watch me, and follow my example. You see, I know how to talk with the upper set. Yeah, but you sound much clearer when you're wearing the lower set, too. <laughs> well, never mind. The most important thing is dignity. Plenty... I don't... That might be... Now, plenty of dignity. Mm. Come in. Mr. Burns? Yes? I'm very happy to be here. I'm your sponsor. Well, I'm very glad to see you. Shake hands with Miss Allen. Well, well, well. So you're Miss Allen. Well, how do you say I get a wham out of shaking the hand that makes the spam? <laughs> Crashy, please. Mm, it comes out of the can. <laughs> Crashy, the sponsor. Want me to scram? Mm. Crashy, I told you how to act. Oh, you want me to be formal with Hormel? Formal with Hormel? <laughs> Why not? That's normal. <laughs> Gracie, you're losing your dignity. Oh, that thing's showing again. <laughs> well, uh, 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 this is uh, Bud Heaston. How do you do? I do as well as I can on the salary I get. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a very large salary, I might add. Uh, and this is Artie Shaw, one of the world's greatest musicians. This is indeed a pleasure. I've been waiting for this chance to meet you, Sponce. <clears throat> uh, uh, don't, uh, don't mind him. Uh, you see, he's nervous. Oh, don't be embarrassed, Mr. Burns. I understand these things. There's one thing I learned in college. Uh, pardon and... me, sir. Did I hear you say you went to college? <laughs> yes, that's what he said, sound man. Thank goodness. After six months on this program, it's a pleasure to meet someone who's gone further than grammar school. Well. <laughs> I myself am a Harvard graduate. Let me shake your hand. Well, thanks. Uh, I graduated from Yale. <laughs> You're a Yale man? Why, yes. <laughs> yes. I'll be right back, Mr. Burns. Where are you going? Downstairs to wash my hands. <laughs> I really, I really don't know what to say. I'm sorry that happened. I understand, Mr. Burns. Yeah, Artie, I'm going to tell George right here and now. Where did he get Wait that stuff? Who Wait did he think he is? Wait a minute, Gracie. What is this? Tell me what. Well, 
Christmas is coming and Artie Shaw wants a raise and Bud Heaston wants a raise and Senor Lee wants a raise. Gracie, aren't you forgetting yourself? That's right, I want a raise too. Hmm. <laughs> Gracie, what about the sponsor? He's getting enough now. Quiet! <laughs> Quiet! A raise, give people a raise at my salary. Do you know what cost me $50,000 a year to live? It ain't worth it. <laughs> Quiet, Artie. Uh, Mr. Burns, I feel obliged to interfere. I think these people have done a wonderful job all season, and I think they deserve a raise. Well, I'm sorry, but I just can't do it. I think you should. Well, I'm sorry that you can't see it my way, but, well, they either continue working for the same salary or I quit. Goodbye. Say, hey, he's even better than Betty Davis in the letter. <laughs> Uh, now, 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 wait a minute, everybody. Uh, this is no laughing matter. Mr. Burns looks serious, and if you really quit, you'll all be out of work. And take the advice of an actor who's been out of work, it's no fun. My advice is to sign up at the same money. Well, I, I think you're right. Yeah, I guess I'm idea. Well, where do we sign up? Uh, right here. Okay. Oh, you're, you're doing the only smart thing. <laughs> Look at me. You people don't know what it means to be cold and hungry for months at a time. Yeah. Well, here it is. Now, uh, go out and see if you can square us with George. Well, uh, I'll do my best. Oh, Mr. Burns? Hey. Mr. Burns? Yes? Uh, Mr. Burns, uh, they, uh... I did it. I did it. You did it? Yeah. You mean they signed it? Yes. At the same salary? Right. Well, you did a great job, Harry. Here's ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Will some member of the family be sure to remind Mother to get a can of Spam when she goes shopping tomorrow? She'll like Spam because it's so easy to serve. You'll all like Spam because this grand-tasting meat is so tender, so juicy, so full of flavor that you'll want to serve it often. Spam is the most popular meat item brought out in a long, long time. Thousands of families now use Spam regularly. If you haven't yet tried Spam, now's the time. You're really missing something. Ask for Spam at your food dealers tomorrow. Thank you, bud. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Good night. Well, Gracie, it only cost me $10, and I've got you all signed for the same salary. And it only cost us 50 cents. 50 cents? Uh -huh. For what? The invisible ink we signed the contract with. Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> again next Monday, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. This is Bud Heaston reminding you to remember that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. <laughs> Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.